Northwest Bruin Football Show. I'm the head coach, Josh Robinson. We're here to talk about last week's game versus Central High School. Um, unfortunately, it's the first time we've lost on our home field. Uh, played a very good football team uh, with multiple college prospects, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we just made too many mistakes, and really probably the, the biggest backbreaker of all of it were the uh, special teams touchdowns that happened. We've done a really good job of covering punts all year. Um, and, and really hem people up on the sideline like we want to, uh, to be able to tackle them. And this particular game, uh, they have a young man who's arguably the best returner in our league who has uh, multiple touchdowns and stuff. And, and he was able to juke and jive and make our guys miss and end up scoring a couple of touchdowns before half. That really took it from that 7, 14 nothing to that 21 nothing halftime lead. and. Uh, you know, they have a really good running back, and I think we did a good job on him at the end of the night. I believe he had like 18 carries for 90 yards, which were both uh, – and touchdown, I believe he only had one. So his yardage total and his touchdown total were the lowest of all year. Um, but regardless, it was not enough to get the job done. We could have played better on, on defense, offense, and special teams. Uh, and, you know, we, we have to continue, even though it's the end of the year, to continue to grow. Uh, we know Central and Cedartown are really talented, and they could be considered uh, the most talented team of who we play in the playoffs. We have clinched the playoff spot at, at this time, so we will definitely play next week. Um, GHSA just announced that it will be Saturday when we play. Uh, we have no details at all. We don't know who we're playing. We don't know how our seating will finish. Um, even though we have our four teams, the other region has their four teams. They don't know how their seating will finish, uh, and they have three guys at the top that are all tied with the same record for the top spot, and they all beat each other. So it's going to be an interesting weekend to try and figure out, and then we'll put together a schedule. Uh, you know, regardless, there will be another week of brewing football and return to the playoffs, which is really good. You know, eight out of the last nine years is definitely something to be proud of, and that was our one of our m many goals as we set out in the year to return to the playoffs, and we did it. Um, but we have to continue to try to get better, and we have a, a big challenge coming next week. Um, but let's talk about our offense this past week. Gavin Knuckles, I thought, was a really did a really good job. Um, I think he's matured a lot as a quarterback. He was 17 for 29 for 195 yards and a touchdown. He's letting those balls go more that we've talked about, like throwing it down the field when it's one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and, and I believe there's – been a couple of times over the last few weeks. He may have interception or a ball's got knocked loose. We want to give our guys an opportunity. He's been really, really tough. He was not given much time. Um, I do not think we did a, a very good job protecting him uh, in the pocket, but he's gotten better and better and, and will continue to grow. He also had 19 carries for 80 yards and two touchdowns, most of those yards on scrambles. Uh, you know, we, we had a difficult time running the ball and, and protecting him. So. Uh, makes for a rough night for sure. Uh, Mason Mays had one carry for 11 yards on the night. Mason's back. He went through a, a big long spell in the middle where he was unhealthy. Uh, he's doing a good job on defense and going to be an important part of what we do uh, in the future, playing a good role on special teams right now as well. Cameron Collins uh, came in with Jacob Lee, our, our usual backs, and uh, they didn't get many yards, but they had eight to ten carries uh, for around 15, 20 yards. We just have to do a better ball, job running the ball. And that falls on uh, the entire group. Uh, that falls on us. And, and we have to work. And, you know, Central's really good and they're physical up front. But at the same time, uh, you know, we have to be able to turn out those yards to make our passing game more effective. Um, Isaiah Foster on the night had eight catches for 115 yards, another big week for him. He didn't find the end zone, but still had uh, multiple times where he was really physical running downhill. Uh, again, they're putting four over two on Hudson's side and, and kind of opened up the other side for us. And, and Isaiah's uh, benefited from that, not just that, but his talent as well. He's a really good player for us. Uh, Kendris Douglas had another good night with three catches, 36 yards, been really consistent, barely behind our leading receivers. Uh, and, and just continues to churn and, and, and get better and does a better job blocking. Um, he's become one of our best perimeter blockers, and at this time last year he was a long way from that. So uh, showing some growth for sure. Hudson Gray still came up with four catches for 34 yards and a touchdown. Uh, beautiful throw on a corner route by, uh, by Gavin and, a, and an unbelievable catch by Hudson. It was really one of those throws you talk about. It can only be caught by 
uh, the good guys, and but it was going to be a difficult catch, and it was a, you know again it was placed perfectly, and Hudson is just a really talented player, and he's playing a ton of plays, and uh, you know it wears him down a little bit. There's no way you can go out and play 150 plays at uh, top notch without being tired at the end of the game, and that's Hudson. You know he he does that for us. He plays as hard as he absolutely can, and. Uh, and it's kind of limited him a little bit with his touch, uh, with his touches. But at the same time, it's made us better on defense too. So um, just being a total team player uh, is really nice to see. Brecken Sermons had a catch for nine yards on the night. Brecken's a guy that keeps working for us uh, and doing a good job. I believe he's double-digit catches this time, uh, this at this point in the year. Austin Cooley didn't get a catch. He hurt himself. Um, we were we were praying it wasn't a broken thumb, and thankfully it turned out not to be. Um, so he will be back out there, and Brecken and, and him will uh, continue to work all across the wide receiver position and, and do a wonderful job for us. At this time, let's take a break and look at the first half highlights. Here's the Bruins as we enter the field. Our, our guys, you know, uh, potentially the last home game that we play, and uh, right there, uh, Hank Harrison has done a fantastic job for us, sets the edge, and. Lucas got to finish that tackle, be a little more confident, but there uh, you can see him run the football. We have a bevy of people that are uh, attacking that receiver and good coverage by Raven Foster as he knocks it loose from their number one target. Uh, good matchup, uh, tough matchup, and I thought Raven and all our defensive backs did a pretty good job uh, on the night, but again, we have to do better next time. You know, uh, Here we come on, on offense after we make them punt, and Gavin does a good job. We give up that early pressure. They were they just moved a few guys around with where uh, they were blitzing from, and it led to way too much pressure uh, from our guys. We have to have to do a better job protecting, keep our eyes up, and see. There we had gave them so much trouble on the first possession. You can see them coming back and shifting, uh, and our guys do a great job of making an adjustment. We haven't seen them do that all year long, but we knew that would probably be one of the adjustments they had, and 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 our guys were smart and into the game, and here they are going forward on fourth down. Uh, and they drop back to pass, and unfortunately, we're just right there. Uh, they get a blocker on us uh, on that completion and able to pick up a first down. Throw out route, big hit here by Hudson Gray, doing a good job for us, good pressure by our up front guys. There, Dawson Whitmore is able, able to make the guy escape, uh, and then uh, Caden Ramsey applies the pressure, and ultimately, we're there. Uh, to make these guys punt. They haven't done a lot of that within our region this year um, because of their immense amount of talent. Unfortunately, the ball was uh, spotted right there at the two yard line. Good kick by that young man and a little bit of uh, fortunate events allowed it to go out to where it was. Here our guys are pursuing to the football. Um, you see a lot of people. I saw Miles in on the tackle. I believe Dominic Johnson. There you can see the explosion of, of number five. Number five has offers from uh, every major college football program uh, in, in the nation as a sophomore, uh, Georgia, Florida, uh, USC, the whole shebang, uh, and our guys continue to fight, and we're excited about the opportunity uh, for it, and at the end of the day, we come back, and, and we're able to, to uh, stop them with it 7 nothing, and uh, Gavin with a good scramble there, I believe we punted it away, and they ended up uh, scoring a touchdown on the punt, and then we came back, uh, went three and out on offense, and, and came back on defense. There's Caden Ramsey pursuing from behind. Dawson Whitmore in on the tackle. Caden Ramsey again. Uh, Adrian Madrigal, uh, Miles Mays all in on the tackles to run the power. Here's a quarterback keep. They tried to keep it out of the backside. Again, something else. Well, this is frequent for us. We see things that they haven't done all year, uh, but Isaiah Foster follows his rules that he has. And, does a good job of getting a tackle. There's a really big play for Tony Bernecki on the night, again, who had a really outstanding night for us. And run a little twist, and Miles gets some pressure. And we come out of coverage too early at linebacker, but um, we're able to force them into an incompletion and make them kick a field goal. Uh, and, and they end up missing. It hits the crossbar. Um, and we ended up punting the ball. and. Uh, they returned another kick for a touchdown. So unfortunately, we go down at halftime with it Central 21, Northwest nothing. At this time, let's take a break.
Welcome back to the Northwest Football Show. Let's talk about our defense a little bit. Uh, again, I thought there were times uh, where our guys played really well. We installed something new. Uh, I am very much a believer defensively as you try to fit everything together, have checks and rules, and you work from, from that on day one and expand it throughout the season and grow a little bit on what you do. Well, we did that, but we added a new wrinkle that really helped slow down Central. Um, you know, at the point of attack, the Buck sweeps their favorite play with the counter being uh, their second favorite play. And we wanted to take those two plays away. And I thought our guys uh, did an outstanding job. We missed a couple of tackles on some plays uh, that really hurt us. We had a, a couple of tackles in the backfield and they broke free and ended up one time uh, going the distance for a touchdown and another time just getting a big gain on, on a, a second down and long. So. Uh, those kind of things unfortunately happen versus uh, good teams, and we have to continue to get better on defense as we go forward as well. Miles Mays uh, played a big role in that. We used him to kind of, um, to use maybe common language to clog the hole where they were really trying to run the buck sweep off of their uh, H back, and, and we used him, and they tried to motion and shift. And our, you know, we installed all this on Monday, and, and it didn't look uh, yeah, we knew it would work, but we didn't look very comfortable with it, which is obvious. But um, as practice went on that day and the entire week, our guys started performing the, the task at hand uh, much better, and Miles played a huge role in that. But as usual, Miles wasn't just a, a hole filler. He was a guy who ended up with eight tackles, two tackles for a loss, a sack, and a forced fumble. So, uh, you know, it really, I guess it was a forced interception because as he – he hits the guy, it falls forward to a pass, and Dominic Johnson gets the interception. So really good night, productive by Miles, unbelievable player. That's why he's been elected to play in a very prestigious all-star game for upcoming seniors. Uh, Adrian Magical on the night ended up with four tackles, tackle for a loss. It was his uh, second game playing more at defensive end for us and uh, did a really good job. And they try to attack him because he's not the, the biggest guy on the field, but he's just so – uh, slippery uh, as a guy that doesn't stay on blocks and he plays so hard and he's a strong kid in the weight room. So he's got a lot of things that play in his favor. Tony Bernecki, again, I'll continue to say he may be the, the best single special teams player we've had here, um, but he is also getting more time uh, on the defense line, started at nose for us and really uh, caused a lot of trouble uh, for Central moving around. He, he kept Caused the first few stops, breaking free, uh, making making the quarterback scramble. So he ended up with four tackles, a tackle for a loss, and a quarterback pressure on the night. Will C continues to come in with more plays than he was early in the year and did an outstanding job uh, for us contributing to our, our guys and giving the other guys time off. And then another young man named Levi Crawford, who we think very highly of because of his work ethic, and his desire and drive that he shows every day within our football program. We're definitely lucky to have him. He had three tackles on the night and continues to uh, grow and improve as he's getting older. Just a sophomore for us, you're going to hear his name a lot over the next couple of years for sure. At linebacker, Dawson Whitmore had seven tackles. Uh, Dawson is a just a really tough individual, continues to do things for us, uh, get us lined up. He's kind of our vocal leader and just does an outstanding job, was voted a team captain for a reason, uh, and, and continues to, to go out and make a lot of plays for the Bruin defense. Dominic Johnson also had seven tackles on the night. Just, um, you know, I can't say enough about the, the steadiness of our guys and, and the plays that they made. And Dominic also had uh, the interception on the night. We're just we're we're thankful for where we're at with those guys, and we're also excited to see uh, us uh, grow as a defense over the next uh, year because we have a lot of these guys back, and we're only graduating a couple of starters and three or four guys that play a lot of time out of our 16 or 17 that get most of the reps. So. Uh, you know, it, it's really nice to see Sam Crossan had three tackles and a tackle for a loss. Sam's that guy that moves between inside and outside linebacker, plays tight end, uh, snaps on punts and extra points and, and field goals and plays every special team at a high level. He's just a really jack of all trades that, that performs at a high level for us. Uh, you know, he's invaluable to our football team. I'm not sure where we would be without him. He had the, the three tackles and tackle for a loss that were all big plays for us in the game, and a couple of them stopped drives 
um, that central zone. Caden Ramsey had seven tackles and three pressures. Caden, uh, physical ability is one of the reasons we're able to kind of change things up and use him uh, in between that swing roll, in between a typical outside linebacker versus a tight end. Uh, walking up on the line and, and, a, and being like kind of like a defensive lineman. He's just kind of your typical 3-4 outside linebacker that you're looking for to play on the strong side uh, versus those guys because of his versatility. He did a really good job for us on the night uh, performing well. Lucas Amos, five tackles and a pressure. Lucas is, is really, really good outside the box. He, he gets off box. He's so comfortable. Um, he's still gaining his comfort level within the box, and he gets to tackles, and sometimes he's not finishing them because he knows there's certain rules he has to follow. And as he becomes more comfortable, again, just a sophomore, um, his tackle total is going to increase for sure. Defensive back, we'll start out talking about our leading, uh, our second leading tackler, Hudson Gray. He had four tackles on the night. We've already kind of uh, touched on this. Uh, you know, he, he's returning kicks and he's punting and he's uh, playing offense, obviously, and he's just became so much better. It's uh, amazing how much he's improved on defense, even though he was never a bad player. He just cares about what we do and he realizes the importance of his role within our defense, and we try to give him some breaks. But it's really hard to take him off the field because he cares so much and plays so hard. Um, Chance Whitfield came in uh, after a, a early change that we made uh, because uh, uh, Hank Harrison was injured, and he did an outstanding job coming in with three tackles. And Chance is uh, just a guy that can stay steady for us and is just a junior and will we'll continue to prove. Uh, as the year goes on and over the next year, uh, for sure. Cade Parker had six tackles on the night. Uh, you know, probably a little lower than normal for him, but really our guys up front were able to corral the, the run game a little better, uh, and he didn't have as many opportunities. Still missed a couple of tackles, still learning. Another sophomore for us that's going to be back for a while. Raven Foster had one of his best tackling nights for us, ended up with four tackles. Took him out early. He, he wasn't real physical on a run on the sideline with a chance to really make a, a big tackle. Still got one, but a big tackle, and it really motivated him to go out and play better for us. And Raven's a good player, uh, leader for our guys that works really hard and cares about our football team. Um, Kyle Cummings and Isaiah Foster each had a tackle playing in their limited time. We had a couple guys get hurt. Hudson was cramping. Kyle came in as a freshman. Uh, doing an outstanding job, and then Isaiah had so many plays on offense uh, that were long runs and, and deep routes that we didn't play him as much as we have, but still uh, a very good night for him. At this time, let's take a break and look at our second half highlights. Here we are starting the second half. Uh, they got a big gain on, on first down, and uh, well, actually we punted it away, and they got good field position. There's Miles Mays making a big play, another coverage. Uh, by Raven Foster on the night, who has continued uh, his, his good play there. Lucas Amos has a chance to make a big play in the backfield, but makes him escape the pocket. And then Miles Mays and Dawson Whitmore uh, clean up on, on the play. Uh, as they go down, they get another really good bounce as it hits and rolls in their favor and puts us deep within our territory. Uh, uh, Gavin scrambling right here, throws a very good ball to Isaiah. Isaiah makes a few people miss. I believe this was a third down play. Uh, gets down the sideline and, and picks up good yardage. Uh, I believe we end up punting and then uh, they were able to uh, move the ball a little bit and ended up scoring on a missed tackle. Uh, here you see Hudson with a big gain down our sideline and was negated with a blindside block. Got to get in front of those guys and kind of put your hands up. You can't really hit them. You can, you can kind of screen them in the basketball version. There's Gavin Knuckles again, a really tough young man, has done a good job for us and continues to improve. Extending the play and, and makes a big play. And here he is with another one where he gets down the field and cuts back and scores a rushing touchdown for us. Really, really good, really heads up play, really smart for him um, as we come on. And uh, JJ Plaza adds the extra point with Austin Cooley holding to cut the lead to 28 7 with a couple minutes left. Um, they come out, they're trying to throw a little bit. Uh, and Raven ends up uh, knocking the ball loose, kind of gets uh, beat a little bit right there. But you can see Caden Ramsey, Dominic Johnson, uh, Dawson Whitmore all in on the tackle. There's Dawson uh, blitzing and gets a good uh, movement and is able to get in and close to the tackle. But the young man, again, shows his ability and kind of gets free 
Looks like we couldn't wrap him up there, um, and I believe they go on to score, even though we have a tackle for a loss. Uh, in the backfield, they end up kind of spinning out of it and going for a touchdown. There's a good scramble by Gavin Knuckles, a good completion to uh, Brecken Sermon. Here's a really hard run by Mason Mays. He finds a way to squeak through and picks up a first down, which is really good to see him back out there and his physicality. Here's Gavin, uh, good job by our O-line, I've mentioned you know, at times we gave up too much easy pressure and Gavin <laughs> kind of has a long time and then he's able to get downfield and scrambles out of bounds uh, here. Um, and, and here's the, a really good throw I mentioned earlier, a perfect throw by Gavin, a really good catch by Hudson um, to score uh, and, and cut the lead again for us as J.J. Plaza ends up adding the extra point, um, cutting the score to 35-14. Uh, they, they go to kickoff. Uh, I'm sorry, we kick off to them, they get a big return, and a couple plays later, the, the young man broke some tackles, really his longest run on the night, 22 yards, and, and goes for a touchdown. And so it's 42-14, to 14, and you can still see our guys fighting and playing, and Gavin getting downfield, he's, you know, he's, he slides a lot like we want him to not take hits, and so he ends up kind of bloodied uh, frequently, uh, does a really good job for us. I'm really, really proud of his growth and development. Isaiah crossed the middle for a catch, and... Our guys are still fighting. There's a really big play by uh, Miles Mays causing that interception as it falls in Dominic's hand. He makes another catch. I believe it's, uh, my, uh, or I know it's Dominic's second uh, interception on the year. Really good scramble. There's that one-on-one -on -one ball that, that we couldn't get Gavin to throw early in the year because he was uncomfortable and he's getting more comfortable as he's getting older uh, and, and more experienced. Good blocking by Isaiah as Gavin scrambles and picks up another touchdown for us uh, rushing uh, and, and we go in and our guys are there and uh, again they're fighting and we've got our, our first defense still out there and, and you know and then we start subbing once they pick up a first down and uh, there's Sam Crossing uh, with a big stop for us again just a really good player plays so many roles on our football team we're still pursuing the ball just as hard as the score was 0-0 and that's a sign in, uh, of, of the you know our, our defensive coaches uh, and the way they coach and we're proud of those guys and it's a testament to our young men uh, most uh, uh, mostly to their character and what they are so they still fly around the football until the final buzzer ends with central 42 northwest 20. at this time let's take a break Welcome back to the Northwest Football Show. Um, there's a lot of scenarios that could play out uh, on Friday. I believe we could finish as high as two and as low as four. Uh, but again, we, we've secured a playoff berth, which is uh, very exciting for our young men and the work that they put in in the off season. Uh, you know, it's just, it, people don't realize how difficult it is to win. And I say this when we win or when we lose. Uh, it, it's a difficult thing. We're not just playing the local teams, we're playing people from all over the Northwest Corridor. It'll be like that uh, when the new regions and all that come out over the next few weeks. Uh, you know, there's a, a great chance that we're in 3A and our region will look at least somewhat different, but you're not playing these local teams that are just confined to a certain area. We're spreading out and and you, ha you face a different caliber of athlete and you have to go adjust. And, you know, it, it's a lot of learning curve. So I don't care who we're playing, a, a win and achieving things is a, is a really big deal and not uh, near as easy as um, you may hear on TV when they talk about football teams, whether it's NFL or, or uh, college. I mean, we're talking about high school kids that come out and work every day. And I'm just so thankful that our guys have done that, never gave up. We, again, 
we, we didn't come back like we wanted to and win the football game this past Friday, but our guys continue to fight to the very end. And, uh, you know, that's something for those guys at the end of the day to learn a lot of life lessons with uh, that they will use in the, in the future. So um, we have a big game coming up with Cedar Town. It's going to be very difficult. They're very talented. You know, they've won the region the last few years. They still have a chance to win the region depending on the outcomes Friday, even though they lost to Central. So it, it is definitely going to be an interesting night and a big challenge for us. They have another Georgia commit and multiple young guys with, with offers already, all that kind of stuff that's kind of typical for the Cedartown teams that we've seen. So we're going to have to go out. We're going to have to play well, execute, uh, protect Gavin, and run, be able to run the ball and then be in the right spot on defense because a little bitty – uh, mistake against these guys in their wing tee is going to turn into a big play. So big challenge for us, and we encourage you guys to come out. Um, it's not going to be uh, terribly cold on Friday, and there's some good travel and nice scenery that you're going to be able to see this time of year. So come on down and support the Bruins as they go out and fight another time for the last region game of the year and last regular season game. Until next week, this is Josh Robinson with Northwest Football.